Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Higgins, founder of the Foundation for Cognitive Biases Awareness Foundation, or FIBICF. <laughs> Just kidding. I've been researching the effects of cognitive biases since, uh, well, for a very long time. Welcome to our instructional video series, Unbiasing Your Biases. Gene, are we really going to go with that? We are. Okay. We at the Foundation have put together a series of video vignettes that demonstrate what cognitive biases are, how to recognize them, and how to mitigate them. Each vignette will demonstrate a particular bias, which I'll then promptly break down for you. So kick back, relax, and enjoy our show. Unbiasing your biases. So how do you like being an RA so far? I don't know, man. My dorm is pretty crazy. I didn't realize that being an RA included finding kids passed out in the laundry room. That's sad. Speaking of sad, you have a date for the film yet? What do you mean? I'm taking Katie. Katie? Why wouldn't I? I don't know, because you guys have been on what, like five dates together? Whatever. No, seriously, like, what stage are you guys at? Are you, are you, you're holding hands? <laughs> Shut up. She's awesome. We've actually been hanging out a lot more recently. You know, iChat doesn't count. Seriously. She... Uh... Might be the one. The one. Wow. What is she, Neo? Yeah, seriously, man, <laughs> I don't want to see you get hurt again. Just because she crushed you freshman year. Took you forever just to walk that one off. She's not Jessica. No, you said the same thing about her. I mean, just hear me out. Here we go. It took you a year and a half to just even get on Katie's radar. She spends more time hanging out with her friends than she does with you. So what? She's social. Well, yeah, no, when she's not hanging out with her friends, she's working. Ooh, how awful. A hard worker. <laughs> Look, I know that motivation is foreign to you. Okay, well, what about last weekend? She didn't seem too motivated to go to dinner with you. Dude, she's a waitress. She got off a double ship. The last thing that she wanted to do was go to another restaurant. No, you guys made the reservations like two weeks in advance. What? I didn't know that she'd be working. All right. Okay, my biggest issue with her, she's a flirt. <laughs> so are you. Well, yeah, I know, but I don't flirt with half the men to soccer team. She's their athletic trainer. Well, I've seen her chatting with all of them at the rec center. She is way too friendly. Especially with Pellegrino. Whatever, he's dumb. Okay. Maybe. Have you seen those abs? They're like little black diamond moles. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah, whatever. You're not gonna listen to what I say, so if you wanna take her, you take her. Well. These two look absolutely thrilled with one another. But before I break down this vignette, in order to fully understand cognitive biases, it's important to recognize a phenomenon of the human condition called heuristics. Humans have so much information and stimuli continually bombarding us that our brains have developed an unconscious ability to cut corners in order to make quick decisions. Now, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's actually quite amazing. Problem is, Heuristics only help us intuitively make the right decisions most of the time. Now, with so much information for our brains to compute, sometimes heuristics make us draw incorrect conclusions from these shortcuts. These are called cognitive biases. Let's begin dissecting the most common of the cognitive biases, the confirmation bias. Confirmation bias occurs when someone shows selectivity in both seeking information and evaluating that information. It's a tendency in people to favor, or even seek, information that supports their position, whether or not the information is even true. Take this last scene with Derek and Owen. In the scene, Owen ignores all of the potentially negative comments that Derek brings up. While Derek isn't necessarily putting Katie down, he has some valid points for Owen to consider if he's going to get serious about her. 
At least Derek's looking out for his pal, Owen. But there are a few things to consider here. Derek starts with a theory. Katie will break Owen's heart. All of Derek's data focus on confirming that fact. He points out that Owen and Katie don't hang out a lot. Katie's a flirt, etc., etc., etc. All this evidence supports Derek's theory. This is a classic example of the confirmation bias. Derek never mentions the fact that Katie took Owen's dog for the weekend when he went skiing, or that she took Owen's parents out to lunch when he had class. And trust me, Owen's mom is a lot to deal with. Derek never considered any alternative viewpoints. Now, on the other hand, Owen's guilty too. He believes that Katie is the one for him. Because he knows this so completely, he brushes off each of Derek's warnings. Owen even goes as far as to rationalize each point in his own favor. Katie works all the time. She's motivated. Flirts with the soccer team. She's their athletic trainer. From Owen's perspective, nothing's wrong. All right, let's take a look at another example. Please excuse my third grade drawings here. Let's say my friend, Bob, swears Friday the 13th is unlucky. He knows beyond a doubt it has to be unlucky because his cat died on a Friday the 13th. He was fired on a Friday the 13th and his girlfriend broke up with him on a Friday the 13th and ran away with Sonny da Costa all the way down to a small village on a remote Brazilian shore. You know, I never fully, I mean, Bob never fully recovered from that experience. Anywho, what Bob fails to realize is that many good things have happened to him on a Friday the 13th. He got a promotion on a Friday the 13th. He caught a foul ball that day. And he also won $16,000 in the Delaware State Lottery at a rest stop off 95 on a Friday the 13th. Now, did the negative things happen because it was a Friday the 13th? Or did he just associate the bad things with Friday the 13th because of the popular superstition? Now what's interesting is that Bob completely overlooks the positives that have occurred because he's so entrenched in his belief that Friday the 13th is unlucky. I mean, I couldn't tell you what happened on a Tuesday the 22nd, bad or good, you know? All right, I've been prattling along now for a bit. Let's take a gander at another example and see if we can pick up on another example of confirmation bias. Excellent. Okay, so with that squared away, Michelle, where do we stand on the bus arrangements? The bus will arrive at 6.30 a.m. Perfect. Wait, did you book it through the Chinatown Express or the Chinatown Deluxe? Deluxe? I told you to go with the Chinatown Express. The Deluxe isn't reliable. Right, well I did some research and the Deluxe is the most popular bus service into the city. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to get there on time. Michelle, they're off schedule like 50% of the time. Well then, 50% of the time they're on schedule. <laughs> Y'all, my sister had a trip canceled because the bus broke down in a parking lot. That could happen with any bus company. We would have a better chance of getting there on time if we took the Hindenburg. <laughs> okay, you're only saying that because you have a crush on her. Okay, wait. I've heard some stuff about the Deluxe, but I've, I've never actually taken it. So what made you choose the Deluxe? Like I said, most traveled. Anything else? It was cheaper. <gasps> of course it's cheaper. It sucks. Look, I've taken it before. It's not that bad. Okay, fair enough. How many times have you taken it? Once or twice? I'm guessing once. Okay, easy you two. Michelle, we, we may want to consider what they have to say. I don't understand why everybody's getting so upset. Because you booked a sh bus company. Uh, look, a rave review. One time we took the Chinatown Deluxe and we left 40 minutes late because the bus driver was asleep in the back of the bus and no one knew he was there. That was probably written by a competitor. What? Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Nothing screams safety like a sleepy bus driver. Whatever. He was probably just getting some rest before the trip. Better before than during. Okay, look, we still have to decide on what to do here. But 
Michelle, these do sound like some pretty serious concerns. I mean, Amanda and Tim are obviously uncomfortable. I can see that. I just don't know why. It's not like the Express is that much better. Maybe not, but we might want to consider some other alternatives. There's the flyer, but their buses smell like feet. What about the train? That's way too expensive. Okay. Who takes the bus a lot? Brian. Takes a lot of time when he goes home on weekends. Can you ask him? I'll shoot him a text. I just wanted to save us some money. Look, the show starts at nine. Do you really think it's worth risking being late to save like what, like two bucks a head? I saved us over a hundred dollars. We already spent nearly twenty-five hundred dollars on the tickets for the entire dorm to go to the show. Which is why I wanted to save us money on the bus. That doesn't do us any good if we never make it there. Ha. Huh. Brian says definitely go with the Express. The Deluxe can eat my- Okay, okay. What about the flyer? Didn't ask. Can you ask him? Already on it. Thanks. Guys, I really appreciate all of the work that we've put into this. I just want to make sure that we make the right decision so that way we can all enjoy it. Brian says the flyer's eh. Definitely go with the Express. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, they, they got decent reviews. Michelle? Yeah, that's fine. I'll take care of it. Well, Michelle looks like she was enjoying herself. But on the bright side, it looks like Owen might actually be aware of the confirmation bias. He might not realize it, but the steps he took to mitigate the situation worked out pretty well for everyone. If I could give him a dollar, I would. One of the key steps he took was to consider other alternatives. What's wrong with confirmation bias, you ask? Well, confirmation biases are a concern because they contribute to overconfidence in decision making and blind us to the evidence that's right in front of our faces. You can see it clearly with one type of confirmation bias, the biased evaluation of evidence. We saw Michelle explain away all of the problems noted with her preferred choice and retort with weak positive evidence supporting her decision. Something else to consider. Notice that both Amanda and Tim brought up points that were likely to confirm their hypothesis. The Chinatown Deluxe is bad. Biased evidence seeking is another form of confirmation bias. If I were a betting man, and I am, I'd wager that when Tim hunted online for reviews, he ignored the positive ones and targeted the negative reviews. This is a dangerous way to build a case. Got it? Of course you do. So let's move on to the next subject, the fundamental attribution error. I know, it sounds pretty complex. But I promise, it's easy to understand. Voila. Katie, where are you? Owen? Katie, where are you? I'm stuck at work. We got slammed. What? You're still there? Uh, are, are you leaving? Owen, I am so sorry to do this to you last minute, but... There's no way I'm gonna make it tonight. Seriously? It's homecoming weekend. We got slammed tonight and half the servers called in sick. You gotta be kidding me. S so why don't you just call in sick? I can't do that. I'm already here. Then just leave. I wish I could, Owen, but I can't do that to them. We're totally slammed and short-staffed. I don't get it. Don't get what? You're always working. I never get to see you. I'll make it up to you, I promise. I'm gonna look like a loser tonight, frickin' Han Solo. Owen. Seriously, I mean, why, why do you have to be like that? Like what? Flaky. Wait, what? I'm starting to think Derek's right. Derek? Yeah, you spend more time at work or with your friends than you do with me. Come on, Owen, that's not fair. No, what's not fair is that you're backing out on me tonight. I mean, that's just cold. Wow. That's totally unfair. I have to work. I'm going to look like an idiot in all of these pictures just standing there by myself. Plus, I spent nearly 200 on this monkey suit. Oh, and do you honestly think I enjoy working a double shift on homecoming weekend? I think you're completely unreliable. <sighs> wow, I can't believe you just said that. I really do want to go to the formal tonight. I didn't want to get into this, but I could really use the money with Liz moving out. My rent's nearly doubled, and... And I'm 
having a hard time keeping up with school. I, I gotta go. Naturally. Seriously, we can talk about this tomorrow. I've got like eight tables right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want you to stand your tables up. Goodbye, Owen. I'm sorry. Owen, Owen, Owen. Whining like a five-year-old at bath time ain't gonna impress the ladies. Welcome to the fundamental attribution error portion of the series. The fundamental attribution error occurs when a person attributes someone's behavior to some feature of the person's personality and fails to consider the situation that the individual is in. They don't consider that the environment itself might have caused the behavior, not the person's character. What do I mean? Well, let's say my buddy Bob is sitting at a cafe and notices someone trip on the sidewalk. Bob views that person as clumsy. Now, after finishing his cup of joe, Bob walks back to his car and trips over the same crack. Bob, of course, knows that he isn't clumsy. It's a lot easier for him to see how the situation could cause a person to trip. The street is in complete disrepair. Same event, different interpretation. Bob's original assumption about the person tripping, they were clumsy, is the fundamental attribution error. I love that little guy. Now, let's break down our scene with Owen. The problem we have here is that Owen's reaction to Katie's phone call is based only on his perception of Katie's personality. I'm not justifying her decision, but Owen zeroes in on her character. Katie's flaky and unreliable instead of getting a clear picture of why she's missing the formal in the first place. Owen looks solely at Katie's action, not going with him to the formal, and draws the incorrect conclusion that she doesn't want to be with him. She tells Owen that's not the case. He doesn't listen. He's too focused on diagnosing her personality traits. He sees her action of choosing to stay at work as a manifestation of her being non-committal in their relationship. He should have considered the entire situation. He fails to consider the fact that the restaurant is swamped and she doesn't want to leave her co-workers in a bind or that she has financial concerns. <laughs> then our boy gets a teensy bit carried away and suggests that Katie is unreliable, a dangerous position for any budding relationship. Trust me, I'm a doctor. But why don't we take a look at another scenario and see what else we can learn about the good old FAE, Fundamental Attribution Error. I saw him do it. Kyle, this is a very serious statement. So is stealing my laptop. How do you know that he stole it? I just told you, I saw him. Okay, do you care to elaborate? Um, well, I was in the shower. When I got out, I saw him running out of the room with my laptop. Are you sure it was yours? Yes, it was a Mac with our school logo on it. Has he ever borrowed your laptop before? Once, when his died. And have you ever borrowed his? No, it's a crappy PC. Look, I know he took it. And why is that? He's shady. He obviously steals things. He has a deaf child area sign hanging above his bed. Who steals something like that? Maybe he found it at a thrift store. Oh, sure, right next to the stuffed puppies. <laughs> relax, Kyle. How, how can I relax? All of my work is on that computer and my klepto roommate stole it. Well, maybe there's another explanation. All right. The kid always has new gadgets. iPad, iPhone. How can he afford stuff like that? He doesn't work, his parents have no money, they drive a Datsun. He steals. Kyle. What you're accusing your roommate of is actually very serious. He could get expelled. Now, there's no other possible explanation? There can't be. He stole it, and he's going to pay. That's if he stole it, but you don't know for sure if he's a thief. He stole it. Or maybe he borrowed it. For what? Locating other things to steal? Kyle... <sighs> Did he know you were there? This is ridiculous. I want campus police to get it back from him immediately. What I think we should do 
is talk to your roommate first. I mean, do you have any idea where he is right now? I don't know. A, a, a pawn shop or maybe your thrift store that sells deaf child signs? We have to be really careful. I mean, if you accuse I him... I am accusing him. Right, I know, but... Remember, if you're wrong, the two of you still have to live together. I'm not living with him anymore after this. Has he ever taken anything from you before? I've seen him eating my snacks. That's not quite the same thing. They weren't his. It's from my roommate. What's it say? He's a... He's apologizing for taking my laptop. His... His computer didn't work, so he borrowed mine. Well, I guess that solves this Scooby-Doo mystery. Well, you know, he shouldn't have taken it. Everything's not always as it seems. Just uh, consider all the facts next time. Is, is that him again? Yeah. He said he hopes I saw his note. I guess I didn't because I ran right here after I got dressed. I think we'll just keep this between us. No, I think you should get a new laptop. <laughs> Someone's got a little egg on his face. But at least he's helping me out, right? Looks like Kyle was guilty of the fundamental attribution error this time. In this scenario, Kyle actually witnessed an event. He saw his roommate run out of the room with his laptop. But Kyle failed to consider the surrounding circumstances of that action. Kyle saw his roommate leaving the room with his laptop and could only conclude that the roommate was a thief. As Kyle saw it, there was simply no other explanation. Now, Owen, on the other hand, assessed the situation correctly. He sought more information as to why Kyle's roommate left with his laptop. Owen asked Kyle to think about other situational explanations, including the possibility that he wasn't stealing but had a reason he really needed to borrow it. He tried to keep Kyle from jumping to conclusions. The problem Kyle had was that he placed too much value in his opinion that his roommate was, in fact, a thief. What's difficult with the fundamental attribution error is that we're not even aware that we commit these errors in judgment. This is where heuristics, or those shortcuts our brain makes to reach decisions I talked about earlier, come in. It's not an easy task for us to override our biases. We need to constantly monitor our actions. And with that said, let's move on to my favorite bias, the bias blind spot. Gene, we need a serious upgrade of our technology here. I hate this worthless piece of there's nothing to worry about. I don't know, man. She's gonna break up with me. Dude, you're fine. Every time you turned around last night, she wouldn't shut up about you. She was starting to make me fall in love with you. You know, you're a p I had no date to talk to. All right, well, we're both in trouble. <laughs> no, the only one in trouble here is you. And what was with that dancing out there? It was like you two were in eighth grade. Whatever. You're just jealous you can't foxtrot. Yeah, it's all downhill from there. That's the last time I pre-game with a dozen raw oysters. Dude, you got sick on her dress. That doesn't mean that she's gonna break up with you. She's the most loyal girl I know. What about Boston? The band? No diff at the trip last weekend. She sat in the back seat of my Saturn, middle seat, in between Matt and Jeff, were pretty disgusting, for eight hours. She just wanted a ride to go up and see her friends. And they spent the whole weekend with us because she wanted to be with you. Plus, I can think of about 80 better ways to get there. Oh, whatever, not on her budget. She tried to pay for gas with Chuck E. Cheese tokens. Come on, be serious. The girl even brought you soup when you were sick. She brought me cream of mushroom soup. Cream of mushroom soup. Who eats cream of mushroom soup? Chicken noodle soup. That's love. What I'd love is if you wouldn't chew while you're talking because that is disgusting. Uh, whatever. Well, you're being ridiculous. 
I can't say anything to you, can I? I mean, every point I bring up, you shoot down. Nothing fits your warped point of view. This sound familiar? At all? Because we were just here last week and you pulled that same on defending Katie. Actually, it, it, it does sound familiar. All right, you're paying tough guy. I gotta go. Oh, where? To Katie's, to apologize profusely. And please do everyone in this diner a favor and take a shower. My, my, what happened here? Looks like someone just picked up what I've been putting down. The bias blind spot, my favorite bias. And that's saying something. So what the heck am I talking about? In simple terms, the bias blind spot occurs when you recognize biases in others, but fail to see them within yourself. In this last scene, Owen finally realized that he had been committing biases himself. Owen saw that Derek had been committing the confirmation bias, though Owen probably wouldn't know the proper term for it. Derek's comment made Owen realize that he had been guilty of committing that very same bias. What was really eye-opening for Owen was that he finally understood that although he is so adept at spotting biases in others, such as spotting Michelle's confirmation bias and Kyle's fundamental attribution error, it never dawned on him to look for biases in himself. And that's the key. It's not simply enough to know about a bias, but to be able to scrutinize your own behavior and recognize biases in your own actions. That's why I wanted to save this bias for last because it requires the understanding of other biases in order to fully comprehend it. But just to make sure we get the most out of that last scene, we threw in a little nugget for you. Another quick example of the bias blind spot. Owen hates people that talk with their mouth full. He even points this out to Derek, but Owen doesn't realize that he too is quite guilty of doing the very same thing that he thinks is disgusting. And just before he points it out to Derek, <laughs> I love this bias. Fun times, eh? Hopefully you get the idea. The bias blind spot literally refers to a blind spot within a person's view of the world. They see other people committing a bias, but they remain unaware of the fact that they commit that very bias themselves. Naturally, other people explain away inconvenient facts, not us. Other people are guilty of the confirmation bias, surely not us. Other people commit the FAE, not us. And other people's opinions are overly influenced by peer pressure, not ours. So, as you can see, it's pretty easy to slip into the bias blind spot. Whoops! Well, I never said all this was going to be easy, so it might be time for a brief recap. Our first segment covered the confirmation bias. What to look for here is the tendency of people to favor or even seek information that supports their position, whether or not the information itself is even true. They confirm their beliefs. To mitigate the confirmation bias, just remember to assess all information equally and look for evidence both for and against the idea you're examining. And then there was the fundamental attribution error. This was the error where a person attributes someone's behavior to the characteristics of that individual, but fails to take a complete picture of the surroundings that the individual is in. Now to mitigate the fundamental attribution error, you should consider that the environment itself might cause a particular behavior, instead of a person's traits, dispositions, or values. And last, but not least, was the bias blind spot. It occurs when you recognize biases in others, but fail to see them within yourself. If we accuse others of bias by observing their actions, we need to realize that our biases can show up in our own actions. We covered the bias blind spot last because it actually requires the presence and recognition of other biases. Woo! Man, that was a lot to get through. But I did have a lot of fun, and I hope you did too. 
Our mission here at the Foundation for Cognitive Biases Awareness Foundation is to educate as many folks as we can about cognitive biases. We want to make sure people don't fool themselves and end up drawing faulty conclusions and taking actions that won't work out the way they think they will. I hope we succeeded. And even if we didn't, just say we did. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed our instructional video series, Unbiasing Your Biases. Thanks for watching.